what makes you get up now and make hip hop? Like, what makes you get up in the morning and start lacing the track? Like, what makes you want to drive the studio? You've already accomplished so much. I mean, how many CDs Jurassic Five had? I think four? Four? One solo albums? Solo albums, two mixtapes. mixtapes. Children's album. Uh, a children's album. I don't even know about this. <laughs> Baby loves hip hop, man. If y'all don't know nothing about that, man, Baby loves hip hop. Produced by Prince Paul, along with uh, myself, Wordsworth, uh, Ladybug Mecca, uh, De La Soul, uh, Ursula Rucker, DJ Scratch. Uh, who am I forgetting that came on that joint, man? Um, <laughs> it was crazy. It's basically a, 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 the moral of the children's story is be yourself and don't be scared that you may be different, you know what I mean? So it's like a bunch of little dinosaurs in the playground that that are are, are, are uh, exploring their individuality, <laughs> so to speak. It's pretty cool, man. But it's for kids, man, and it, yeah. Baby loves hip hop, check it out. Rex, you there? Right by your side. Tracy, you okay? I'm doing fine. Billy, are you ready? Just give me the sign. But where's T.O.? <laughs> right here. Yo, DJ. Making sure everything's clear. Tracy. T-Rex. Billy. T.O. DJ. The Dino 5. Here we go. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, man, uh, I think hip-hop saved my life, man. I'm from the south side of Chicago where the gang situation is just rampant, the drug situation is rampant, the corrupt politicians and things of that nature. It's rampant. Um, and I could have easily gotten sucked into that whole vibe had it not been for hip hop. You know what I mean? Had it not been for me participating in something that I felt like was different than everything else, that I felt like empowered me like a Robin Hood where I would get up in the middle of the night and go paint with some dudes on, on trains and, and on walls, you know what I'm saying, that we found and scouted out and, you know, feeling like I, 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 was, I was contributing to change. That's what hip hop did for me, man. So I feel like um, now that it turned itself from just a hobby to a vehicle that can put me in front of thousands of people at a time, it, it became a job. It also became a situation where I'm like, I know that, like I said, I can make change. I, I don't, I don't got no gun. I'm not here with 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 a uh, tough talk more so than I'm here with the weapon that God gave me, which is I'm able to hold your attention. And in doing that, I got to be able to say something that's real, that's relevant, that can affect change. That's how I look at it. Now, some MCs might not. And that, and, and that to me is the difference between an MC and a rapper, you know what I'm saying? Oh wow. Okay, that's a lot. That's a lot, man. I mean, I'm I'm standing next to the, this dude. Like, I'm telling you, he is a genius. No that. doubt, man. Straight up. Um, but uh, yes, yes, y'all. It's one of the greatest songs ever. Like, that's in my opinion, wow. Sergio Mendez. You, Black Thought, Well I Am. Just like, wow. That song makes me just like. <laughs> That's good. It just makes me stop and just like pause. I remember when I first heard that on like a Sergio Mendez mixed thing that I bought at Starbucks, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? It was bought at Starbucks. Who would have thought hip hop at Starbucks? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I put, and I, and my, no, actually, my sister bought it. My sister bought it. Mm -hmm. And then she let me listen to it. And I was just like, what is this? And it was like, I mean, it was just like, it lit me more. Like Jurassic 5, I already knew about. But then, like, when I heard you on that track, I was like, this guy's a genius. Like, like, rushing him like Mikhail Gorbachev. Like, who says that, man? Like, who in their right mind? I'm rushing him like Mikhail Gorbachev. I was like, I wish I would have wrote that line. I'm so mad, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not fair. I can't even rap that. You know, he already used it. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, that's not even right. But, I, man, <laughs> it's the truth, man. I was in my little Honda Civic LX with the sub in the back, like, boom, boom. Dun, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the little claps come on on your verse and like tune the fish back to business, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, uh, it's, it's banging, it's banging. And like, 
I just got to know, like, how was it? I'm oh, sorry. How was it working with Sergio Mendes? How was it working with Will I Am, Black Thought, Studio? I mean, the whole nine yards. Just let us know. Crazy business was like, okay, first and foremost, I'm, I'm a Sergio Mendes fan, man, um, from, from the day. From the day. You know, my father was really into bossa nova and, and samba music and stuff. Just from, you know, he's like an eclectic listener, so he listened to everything. Um, so it was crazy to you know, full circle, like get older, you know, become a grown man, meet the guy, and he's he's doing an album with a friend of mine. And Will I Am is a good friend of mine from years ago, you know what I'm saying? Um, been knowing him for 20s of years, you know? And and it was just cool to see him branch out because he was always sampling Brazilian music for some of his stuff. So it was cool to see him really reach out and go, yeah, I'm gonna work with somebody that's really prominent in the Brazilian field, you know? the Brazilian music field. So it was like dope. Like, oh, you working with Sergio Mendes. Now, I'm on the road. I'm riding around with Jurassic. And I get a call from Will. He's like, yo, I got this track, man. Uh, you want to get on it? <laughs> but Will always, you know, he always yeah, saying that. Know. And I'm like, word, yeah, I get on it, man. Because I know he be doing big things. So I'm like, yeah. You know, like I did the Bridging the Gap song with him a while back. Before they became the Black Eyed Peas. And it was like, I just kind of knew he was going to be that dude. Because he's always been a talented cat. Always been able to rhyme like a mug, always been able to produce. He's always been that dude, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of people that never give him credit, you know? But at any rate, um, when he called me and he like, yo, you want to get on something? I'm like, usually like, let's go. I have no problem with it. So when he told me that, he was like, yeah, man, it's me and Sergio Mendez. Already I was sold, <laughs> right? I was sold. Let's go. But then he was like, oh, Black Thought on it too. I was like, ha, oh, send me the track, dude. Send it to me. <laughs> so he sent it to me, and uh, but I was on the road. I couldn't get in the studio with him. Um, but when I when I got it, I got it on my phone, and I was listening to it on my phone. Like, damn, this is hard. Uh, and I and I just started to come up with the verse because uh, I was on a plane flying to San Francisco. Um, I had a show up there, and uh, I started to come up with half. The, I had like half the verse when I got off the plane, but I had nowhere to record it. So I was like, I was like, in search of. Um, and so I was um, doing the show. I was doing a collaboration with. Uh, the Crown City Rockers at the time. These guys from San Francisco called the Crown City Rockers. And one of their, their main producers' name is Head Nodic. He's like, man, you can record it in my house? I was like, let's go. So <laughs> by the time we got to his crib, this verse was done in my head. And I was like, all right, all right, all right, I'm ready. So we sat in his closet. I recorded it. I sent it to Will. And I was, you know, Will always take forever to call me back and go, I like that. Or, nah, you should do this again. So I'm like, walking around like, damn, I hope he liked this, man. <laughs> I just get an email back. He was like, "Woo, fire!" <laughs> I was like, "Good." <laughs> so, yeah, that's how I came about, man. And I was just bugging because I didn't hear the finished result. I didn't hear it, you know. So I'm in a I'm in a bowling alley in in L. A. with uh, some friends of mine who used to be uh, the sound people for Jurassic Five. They also moonlight and did sound for Common. So it was Common's first time going to Australia. We had been to Australia like I don't know how many times, and. Uh, we were all in the bowling alley together. And Con was, you know, we were just talking, me and Con was talking back and forth about, I was like, dude, you finna have some fun when you go to Australia, man, it's lovely out there and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden the track comes on on the radio, I mean, on the, on the system in the, in the bowling alley. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, oh, wait, 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 this that song we did. So I had to listen and when I heard it, I was like, oh, they killed it. I was like, yeah, and the, and the DJ, I guess had, it was a promo copy. So he came out of the booth. He was like, I saw you in here, man. I had to play you that, man. He was like, here, I don't know if you got this, but I want to give it to you. <laughs> I was like, good looking, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of how I heard the original. It was dope. Oh, man, yeah, cool. man, crazy. Wow, that's... Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't have any other questions for you. I just wanted to uh, definitely um, allow you to give some shout outs, maybe for some friends, family, loved ones. Um, maybe you can give us a shout out, Primate City TV. Yeah, no uh, Let's do it. First and foremost, Charlie Tuna, Manphibian MC, J5, Ozo Motley Fame, Primate City TV. Primate City TV. <laughs> Second, CharlieTuna.com, C-H-A-L-I-2-N-A. All things me. Check me out. Yeah.